everybody. This is Dawn from Double D Chicks and Stuff Homestead. Thought we'd do something different this morning. My husband is making some homemade catfish stew, so I'm going to turn it over to him and let him start explaining to you what he's doing. How y'all doing? Today I'm cooking uh, my granddaddy's <clears throat> uh, catfish stew recipe, the late great Ellis Butler Jr. <clears throat> gave me this recipe years ago and I kind of tweaked it uh, along the years with a good friend of mine, Jason Young, helped me get this thing kind of patented down pretty good. Um, I'm not going to give you all the details on the recipe because that kind of take away from the secret effect, but I'm going to tell you what's in it. Um, I use fat back, bacon ends, red onions, uh, of course catfish that my uh, oldest stepson uh, caught for me. They bush hooking in uh, Great PD River earlier this summer. Um, the catfish, a uh, little bit of shrimp. Uh, doesn't matter what kind. I, I, I usually just buy the, the frozen, de-veined, uh, small shrimp and minced clams. <clears throat> of course, you season it to your, however you want to season it. Um, I like mine kind of hot and spicy, so I generally use a lot of uh, cayenne pepper, um, jalapenos. But basically what you do <clears throat> to get started, and potatoes, forgot the potatoes. Um, I always use Campbell's soup, tomato soup. Uh, depending on how much you want to use, you start with Campbell's soup, you put it in your pot, you get it going on low, you don't want it to scorch, put a little bit of, um, uh, Tomato paste in there. You get go ahead and get all that going, heating up. While that's heating up, you take your potatoes, you clean them up real good. And this time I'm trying something different. I didn't skin them. Um, I bought some of the, Dawn bought some of those, uh, what kind of potatoes were them? Just white potatoes. Just white potatoes, got a real thin skin on them. So I just cut them up in bite-sized pieces. <clears throat> you get that going, get your, your sauce going, and you put your potatoes in there. Your potatoes take the longest to cook. The last thing you want to put in there is your fish, and that's when everything's done. It's usually two or three hours later. But you get that going, get that heat up. Once your potatoes get going, don't forget, you got to keep stirring this stuff. You want it on low so it don't scorch. Then you want to take some fat back and some bacon ends and get them started for your grease. Are we having technical difficulties over there? I'm showing the fat back. <clears throat> uh, so... You cook your first batch of fat back and and your, your bacon ends. And my granddaddy always told me you cook the fat back to get the grease so you can cook the onions to, to the caramelize. You take the fat back out and eat it, put everything else in the in the in the stew. Well, I, I do some of that, but too much of that salty stuff makes my blood pressure go up, so I usually just put it in the stew. Once the onions are done, you put them in there, you start your second round of of uh, bacon ends, so you got your grease for your deer sausage, and I like to use deer sausage, and I like to use uh, wild caught catfish. You can you can do whatever kind of sausage you like, but I find it uh, getting everything from the from the outdoors tends to make it better. So once you do all that, uh, you got your second round of, of uh, bacon ends, gets you a good uh, a pot of grease. You put your deer sausage in there, and you fry it real crispy. And you cut it up and put that in there. And by then, you're working on your catfish. I like to cut mine up in big chunks, not bite size, big chunks. And the reason why is that's the last thing you put in the soup. You don't want it to cook it down to where it falls apart. And when you want, when you when you put your your catfish stew on a bed of rice, you want to have big fat chunks of catfish on there. So I like to cut mine big. But while all this is cooking. I'm getting ready to start. I got my catfish over there soaking in some water right now. I'm going to start cutting them up, and I'm going to soak them in hot sauce, cayenne pepper, black pepper, and, and uh, red crushed pepper while all this is cooking. So they should soak in that for however long it takes for everything to get going. Now, the key to the, to the whole thing is after it's all said and done, when you put your catfish in there and your shrimp and your clams, the last thing, your soup should be at a boil. When you put it in there, you should cut it back to a simmer. Well, 
Well, you need to let it come back to a bowl and then cut it back to a simmer. And then put it on it, and I have to remind my wife this, you have to put it on the smallest eye on the stove or the smallest, uh, turn your gas down on your cooker as low as it'll go because you do not want this to scorch on the bottom. And then you just let it cook. I've let mine cook all day as long as you just, you know, like on a Sunday like today and it's nice and cool and you can mess around in the kitchen. You want to, you want to, Keep this thing going as long as you can. The longer it cooks, the better it is. You just have to keep an eye on that fish. You don't want that fish to start falling apart. Because as you can see, I'm making enough for all the guys at the shop. Um, so when they reheat it, you want your catfish to, to stay together. One other thing you need to know too, I cook it on gas, not cooking on electricity. If you're cooking on a fish cooker, bring that phone over here, phone. See that right there? It's just an old saw blade. Um, a piece of steel, saw blade, whatever. And, it, and once the heat gets to it, it's going to warp it up and it ain't going to be no good. But that helps distribute the heat through the bottom of the pan so it doesn't scorch as easy. You don't, mm -hmm. want, it, you don't want anything too thick because it takes a long time to get it hot and keep it going. So I found them saw blades uh, usually do the best. If you got any questions, I can't see the phone, so you have to you'll have to message Dawn for anything. I, I hope that's been uh, kind of a something different. I don't really know how to end this thing because I'm not used to talking in no telephone on camera. But I'm gonna turn it back over to Dawn now because I got to get this in the soup right quick. I post pictures of the finished product a little bit later on this evening when he gets it done. This is Dawn from Double D Chicks and Stuff Homestead with Chef Chadwick out here in Timminsville, South Carolina. Y'all have a good day. Here it is, finished product. Have a great day.